Ladies and gentlemen and esteemed guests, thank you for joining me on this immersive journey through the rich history and captivating allure of this extraordinary property. Today, we embark on a comprehensive exploration that will delve into the wonders that await us within. From the moment I first laid eyes on this magnificent building 17 years ago, I knew that it would always have a special place in my heart. Its allure has never diminished. No matter how many times I've driven past, there is a certain charm that emanates from its very core, drawing you in and captivating your imagination. Part of this allure lies in its naming. This property has garnered a multitude of names throughout the years. Some refer to it simply as the mansion, while others affectionately deem it the al Palace a title befitting its regal presence. The fame of this property has spread far and wide with individuals from all walks of life bestowing on it various monikers. Locals in the area have their own endearing names for it, reflecting the deep connection and reference they hold to this iconic landmark, which carries a sense of mystique and curiosity. But it is not just the name that captivates it's the exquisite Moorish quality of its doors and windows, the ultra-soft plaster on the interior walls and the intricate detailing that adorns its ceilings and facade. Moreover, the sheer grandeur of the house itself commands attention and leaves an indelible impression on all who lay eyes on it. Interestingly, this property has a unique history with our company, we have had the honour of selling it, not once, but twice. The first sale was to a development company that had ambitious plans to transform it into a luxurious hotel. However, as fate would have it, the world was faced with the unprecedented challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought those plans to a screeching halt. Looking back, I cannot help but feel a sense of relief for the current owners are not only genuinely lovely individuals, but also they plan to transform this house into a true home, a sanctuary where cherished memories will be made. For me, one of the most captivating features of this property is the inclusion of a unique man cave. And when I say man cave, I don't mean a small dimly lit room tucked away in a corner. No. I mean an underground cavern meticulously crafted to serve as a luxurious bar. I am hoping, of course, for an invite. The owner's vision and attention to detail are truly commendable as they seek to create an environment that is both breathtaking and unparalleled in its grandeur. It is worth mentioning that this property has had its fair share of potential transformations over the years. At one point, the municipality entertained the idea of turning it into some kind of tourist attraction, a place where visitors could immerse themselves in its rich history However, as plans often go, they change, and the property remained untouched. Yet despite the shifting tides of time and uncertainty of its face, this magnificent building stands tall as a testament to its enduring legacy. While time has taken its toll, and extensive renovations are necessary to restore this architectural gem to its former glory, the current owner is unwavering in their commitment to preserving its beauty. The lower part of this building, located at the back and to the left, will undergo demolition. However, the rest of the structure, with its timeless charm and remarkable features, will remain intact. A testament to the owner's dedication and love for this historic abode. Walking through the halls of this property, one cannot help but be overwhelmed by the attention to detail lavished upon every inch of its majestic existence. From the intricately designed chimney stacks that reach towards the, he the heavens to the elegantly crafted windows that bathe the interiors in a soft, ethereal light. The craftsmanship is nothing short of breathtaking. Every doorway tells a story and the roof line stands as a testament to the skill's hands that have laboured over its construction. Furthermore, the land surrounding the property stretches out and is enclosed by ancient walls that stand as guardians of its history. 
The owner has gone to great lengths to create new access points, making it easier to appreciate the property's splendour from every angle. Nature's tranquility surrounds you, and yet within a short di di distance, you can find all of the amenities you desire. In conclusion, it is a rare opportunity to be the owner of a palace or a mansion in one's lifetime. The allure and grandeur of this property are simply irresistible. So I invite you to join me on this enchanting journey as we discover the hidden treasures within this architectural marvel. Today's exploration is just the beginning, part one of a multifaceted series that will chart the progress of this renovation, capture the highs, and I'm sure the lows, as each layer gets stripped back and lovingly restored. Thank you for accompanying me on the initial leg of our journey. Let your curiosity guide you as we step in inside and embark on a closer examination of the remarkable details that await us within. Together, let us uncover the secrets and bask in the magnificence of this timeless sanctuary. And so, without further ado, let our journey continue as we venture forth into the heart of this extraordinary property. Welcome to what we call the palace, because we're just being posy. Um, we've just bought this property, which is an absolute dream. And we are about to start, we've started little bits, but we're about to start renovating the whole project. It's at the moment a 12 bedroom house, which is going to turn into a five bedroom house and uh, but with bathrooms and there's a bit of demolition to do. There's obviously loads and loads of timber work, huge amounts of decoration, um, but the property is going to be absolutely stunning when it's finished. Um, you can see that it's very Moorish inspired um, because the guy who built it in 1899 had made his money in North Africa and in timber and then he came back and built this um, so we are actually benefiting from something that's sort of extraordinary for the area really it um, you know, it's just not like any other property here it's more like some of the some of the palace properties in Sintra and it is just gorgeous um, just masses and masses of work to do but it's a two-year project and uh, plus there's no real time constraints and we're just going at it bit by bit little baby steps i mean this isn't your first rodeo though is it oh no 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 i have i have done other other properties in the past i've done a property very similar to the in size to this um in cheshire and uh that was uh a made that was two and a half years of hard slog to get that to looking something like but uh it, it, this is this is also a different proposition. Um, part of it, trying to combat the fact that there's been pigeons living it for the last 30 years, so the top floor is covered in pigeon poo, um, and and on and on and so forth. So uh, it's just uh, we're just very very excited about it. We love the property, um, and we just you know are happy now to be living here in Alvaiza. I'd, I'd be surprised if you had no bats in that belfry, wouldn't you? It's got, it, there's a little bat, I took a picture of a bat yesterday, just oh, okay. down by the, uh, <laughs> just down by the cellar, cellar door, beautiful little thing. Uh, so yeah, well, we've certainly got pigeons in the loft, we might have had bats in the, bats in the belfry as well. We might be bats in the belfry to be doing it, quite <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but it is, it is an extraordinary property and... Uh, well, I think many of us that, li that lived in the area kind of dreamt of doing a similar thing, but you're the one with the tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> and have actually uh, or, come and done it. Or no, or, or absolutely no imagination and no... <laughs> Fortunately, I have got a bit of experience of doing them, so uh, I think we can. Uh, I think we can safely say it's going to happen. Uh, well, well I, well, I think everyone wishes you the best of luck with it, mate. Thank you very much, Paul. That's brilliant. We are just before any more demolition work goes on. We are trying to show you some of the details of this amazing property. There are so many details. 
So we just want to give you a good shot around the room. I mean, obviously the height of those windows, they are just short of three metres. The ceilings, I'm going to have to do some research on different type styles of ceilings and what genre they came from. And the something we can't miss out in this room, if you turn around again, sorry, is we've got the corner tur turret, tower. Turret, tower. It can be a turret, couldn't it? Maiden in there. Now that goes up both stories and up into the attic. So it's a circular turret on the side of the building on one corner. And you can see, obviously, coming out of that, the walls are curved on each side. So there's a lot of different genres of style. We've got lots of Moroccan influence, but then we've got completely different as well. I mean, the, the, I want to say sort of Tudor looking at the ceiling, but it's probably completely wrong. Hence, we need to do some research. So where the, the wall there, where... Just stop a minute. So... This is what's made us think, okay, let's just get in details now because that's going to get demolished. There's going to be a door going through there. So in the end, this property is actually going to look, in some respects, the same, but also the layout's going to have changed. Things like the door, if you just come left and just look at, look at the door, so they're all being reused. He's having new for him being... Richard, the owner, um, he's reusing pretty much everything that he can. So in the kitchen area, new frames have been made, but the doors are actually just being sanded back and being reused. Amazing, the quality of wood that's been retained after 130-odd years. Some doors, I believe this is one of them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. This room's going to turn into, I believe, it's going to be a bedroom and an ensuite. But I might have got that wrong. Again, will you look up at the ceiling? Yeah, I imagine this is one of those renovation projects that's going to kind of evolve yeah. as it goes along. He's got a set plan, though. Well, that's a nice shot. If you, okay. But we'll do some stills of the ceiling as well. From here... And my eyesight, I can't tell if it's very good painting and it looks 3D or whether it's actually been done with beading. No, it's embossed. It's it embossed. is 3D. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the floor tiles and the walls. Now the walls, hang on a minute. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up because the, it's very faint, the colours. But they're all... Again, this is Moroccan, well, I always consider this Moroccan style I'm polished African, yeah. plaster because it's so smooth. Now, Richard and I are having a debate over whether it's painted over or whether the finish is created by using as part of the plastering process. Neither of us know. Well, it'd be interesting if somebody does know, if they could leave some comments. Yep, yep. You see here, or maybe it's better to look... The panels are all in, and in between... Oh, sorry, I'm now in front of the camera. I know I was meant to be behind it. Um, but in between, to make these... This is actually a groove. My fingers go in these grooves. The detailing is amazing. Are they tiles of some sort? No. They've been made to look like tiles, but they're not right, tiles. Right, okay. It's a plaster finish. Yeah. And maybe... Oh, look. Hang on, come back, come back. Literally, well, I, you know, look up. So probably the bird's nest on top of this archway will probably be removed as part of the renovation. Uh, There's been various uh, uh. people enjoying the property. <coughs> and animals, maybe, should I say. And our feathered friends, too. Yes. Oh, fairy friend making a noise there. So, if he's banging away in there, is it best to go the other way? No. Uh, we are coming into... Wow, this is just amazing. Now, some of 
this paint. Where can you get the best? Here maybe, Paul. This is where you can see it better because the light's shining on it. It's, it's paintwork. And it's very well preserved there. I don't quite know how they're going to do it. As you go round the room, it deteriorates more. And maybe if you just come all the way round, because Richard's working in there, so he's banging away, and come and look. Yeah. But this is the other side of where the door's going through. So, and again, before it gets opened up, it's nice to see what the property looks like now. You're going to flow. Is it all right if we come in there? Sorry, Rich. Yeah, it's no, no, good no. to see that you're actually on the job yourself, very much so. Proof that he works, there you go. Video proof, it'll be live, mate, it'll be live. Okay, so this is going to be the kitchen. I'm correct, aren't I? Oh, nice. Okay, so this is going to be the... Am I right? And this is going to be the kitchen area, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Or is that going to be the kitchen and this is dining room? No, that's dining room. It's just the okay, right. You've just walked into the dining room. <laughs> and I've just left the kitchen. So, if you're looking at the beautiful arched... Well, it's, it's not arched. What would you call that? I can't remember what they call them now. There is actually a name for that. But we could look that up and have yeah. that in later. And now if you turn to the right-hand corner here, this is where some work's already occurred because there was one of the big old-fashioned chimney places there. That's already gone, which is letting in a nice area of light. And yeah, I imagine they will block up the hole in the roof eventually. I would have thought so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought it would be raining. Yeah, Very... <laughs> <laughs> so here is where you go into the area that's going to be demolished you know, this area here will no, longer exist. will no longer exist but let's just look what it was if you can so I, I think this was sort of some sort of like servants quarters in here I could be wrong but there's a bath and a toilet. You're not going in? No. Bath, toilet, wash basin. Yeah, but even just the style of the... the I mean, look at the basins. You, I can't believe you're not it's coming right, in. I've got no light. Oh, OK. The size of the basin. Can you not see it? I can just about see it. Yeah. They are, they are big. Look at that. I mean, it's just... It might... I mean, I could be completely wrong that this would be servant quarters, but... Oh, and look at the Gosh, old sorry. cistern. Look at look, turn around. Just see how tiny the water cistern is. Now there you go. That's ecological for you. That's about as much water as you actually need to flush a loo. Not these enormous things we have these days. Well, no, they're smaller now than they've ever been. So. Yeah. Right. Okay. No. No lid. Sorry. No toilet seat. <laughs> okay. Let's go back out and turn right. And now we're at the rear of the property. Keep going. So this part's staying or going? This part, I think, is being demolished. And the door, I'm going to go back and check now. It is. That's going yeah, to be so, an yeah. exterior door. Right. And, See? And what a magnificent exterior door that will be. Yeah, well, it matches the one on the other side where the shelves sure. are in. Yeah. Okay, so this area is coming down. It was a later add on, and it was the kitchen for the property. So, yes, the door you're stop a minute, the door you're looking at now will be an exterior door. Right. Well, or, it definitely is poshing up a bit. Doesn't or it'll be blocking off, blocked off. It'll be the dining room inside there anyway. Richard! What are you doing with this door here? Is this getting blocked off or is it being exterior? It's, we're taking the door out of the, of the oh. far side there. Yeah. Here, and it's, uh, 
it's store, and that's going in here. In here, so it will remain. And there'll be a second wall built alongside this to support the roof, and then that floor will fall will come up to the same level as this, as this and that. Yeah. And then this is going to be the terrace. It, it's a terrace, isn't it? Onto the, onto the pool at the back. Yeah. So this will be an exterior door reused. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, right, let's try it. So dining room. This is going to have the bifold doors. This piece of wall is coming out from here to the corner and then bifold doors coming in. So you can have it either separated or on, you know, in, with the, in with the kitchen. So yeah. Okay. Straight okay. right into the kitchen. We have a big central island. Yeah. One of the, I mean, on one hand, it's beautiful having so many windows. On the other hand, it makes it difficult to put cupboards in. So, a solution being a large central island in the middle of this kitchen. Yeah, okay, like right. Thank you. Thank you. So, we've been in here. Did you, did you get the close-up of the paintwork? Yeah. You did, Okay. Been in then there. Been in there? we haven't been in there. I'm not sure I'm gonna get it with the light. But yeah, I mean, it's just another massive room. Well, this is going to. I th I'm pretty sure these two rooms together are turning into a bedroom ensuite. No, they're turning into a second lounge. We're going to find out as it goes on. <laughs> <laughs> I did say we were going to be full. <laughs> right, let's go up the stairs. Um, I mean, magnificent. Yeah. Oh, look, can you, get a shot? can you get a shot up there? A little bit. See what I'm looking at, yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, isn't it? Well, the whole house is wow, isn't it? Yeah, incredibly. So, we've got a beautifully matching his and hers bathroom up here, which will be going. I'm a little bit disappointed about that. I can't actually remember what they're going to turn into. It's so big, you forget. But, for example, the wash basins, things, everything will be kept that's, that's worth keeping. I think it's just going to be the bathroom. They're, they're, they're exactly the same. Literally, his and hers <laughs> matching mirrors. bathrooms. Yeah. Lovely. They're just mirror images of each other. And maybe, is it worth getting... Oh, you've got lots of shots, but I was just thinking about the, the window. Yeah, I will do, just from this Yeah, one. because from here, we're overlooking the back of the house where you've got all the lovely oak trees, lots of shade. Actually, it's quite nice detail that you've got... This room literally was the bath and the sink, and they still put the... See, a B-Day from... I mean, I wonder what... When the B-Day went in. Imagine, they're probably quite an old... Well, they certainly wouldn't have gone in at the, uh, at the time of the first construction of this yeah. house. That's for certain. These bathrooms would have been later additions. Yeah. So, I can't remember the full layer. OK, they're halfway up. Oh, they're on their own. Just at the top of the stairs. Now I know that up here, it says I know. Like she's really, oh, look at the height, it's just unbelievable. Let's go straight up. Yeah, go and stand over there. Go with me? That, that part, yeah. Try and get. To the side of the, of the window. To the side Ta -da. of the window. The what? No, to the not. side of the window. What, this side? I just want to give you perspective. Hi, I'm in perspective. Oh, actually, while you're um, 
There was something when Richard and I were talking the other day, but I'd like you to note it now because I, I don't know if that's going to get kept. Can you get a good view of the ceiling? I just did. Okay. You note that everything is uniform about the pattern. Right. Okay. And you've got... So the, the, uh, the, the rectangle, and then inside the rectangle it creates another shape. And then inside that is actually not uniform. It's not regular. It's got different angles. It's not got the corners. So moving into the room that's on the front right of the property. Now, these two rooms together, so this has the turret in it. Now, one of the, I mean, they've, they've, they're dead now. One of these, there's an enormous wasp's nest. No, I think it's in the very top. I've always wanted a turret. You have, dear. You're just lacking a princess. Um, so this room here will become a en suite for the room that we were previously in, where I was discussing... In, uh, so this is going ceiling. to be the This is going to be the bathroom. I believe it's either going to be the bathroom or the wardrobe. Right. But okay. this will be one suite. This side, these two rooms. You can almost get the bathroom in the turret. Mm. Yeah. Well, we did discuss crazy ideas like having a shower in the turret, but it just seemed a bit ridiculous. A bit ridiculous. Yeah. So this is this is one large bedroom, wardrobe, and bathroom. And then if you turn to the right. This is going to be Richard and Anne's main bedroom. Well, it'll be their bedroom. I hope I'm getting all this right. So I believe that that will be blocked off. And then the idea is the bed will go here. So you get those views, those windows, and that light coming in. I mean, I suspect it's more of the window frames than the actual view, I think. If you, if you could come back to where the bed would actually be and try and get in... Yeah. That, 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 that's what we're looking at. Not really, OK, the views are nice on the outside, but it's the effect of the windows, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. So, going through... Then this will be a private snug, so their own sort of private lounge, reading area. Again, you've got the amazing doorways there. And then here we will have, this will be part of there, so it's an L-shaped suite for Anne and Richard. And this will be a dressing room and bathroom. Quite, quite remember exactly how that's going to get configured. But this L shape, so these three rooms we've just seen will be their bedroom, bathroom. I mean, the windows are just fabulous everywhere. And, and yeah, and this, as we said, you know, North African, Moroccan style uh, finish on the walls. Yeah. Just, it must have been, it must have had such a feeling of grandeur when it was oh, all yes. fresh. And everything was made with the best quality. Yeah. So, so I think Richard's already explained that he, he went to Northern Africa and made his money in timber. So up to the attic. So he would have brought some good wood back, hence the fact that you can still use the doors. And possibly these stairs. So there's going to be an alteration made here, above our heads. Maybe maybe if you go down, if you don't mind, and just look down on me. Go, go up and look down. Yeah, sorry. I've got to get this right, though. Possibly difficult without being there. But I think it's got to be here. I think that will carry on along there. And this will go so that you don't get any of that, oh, I'm going to hit my head when I come down the stairs. Well, there's no way I couldn't hit my head on that. 
Oh, I've got the wrong trousers on for this. Because upstairs here becomes three bedrooms, three ensuite bedrooms. So I think that'll be blocked off. Okay. And yes, sorry, these two rooms will go together, but you can't you can't see through. So this smaller room that Paul's looking at now will go through that wall. Yeah, we might as well come out and just I'll show you because I, I can't really describe this because you've got to see it. And this will be the bedroom. Hence, this being blocked off. Right. Because you'll access it through there. Okay. And then this will just be the access. This will be the landing. This yeah. will be the landing. And you're going to have, I mean, it's in, in the worst condition up here because, of course, the roof has leaked over years. I'm absolutely sure there's three ensuite bedrooms up here. That's the end game. Yes, because this is enormous. This is a big one. So you've got an ensuite either side. And at the end here, we have what will be the biggest one. But, yeah, okay. So, I'm guessing that... Well, if you go through the wall, it doesn't really matter which is which, does it? No. The rooms are... Actually, this has got the proper height, so this would be the bedroom, probably, and the room you were just in was in the eaves, wasn't it? You probably put the, put the bathroom, bathroom in, there, in yeah. there, and you're going to go through here. Yeah, that's what makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? This landing area, so I'm not sure what you're... This landing area, so that will just be an area... I think the wardrobe was going to go there. That was the plan. This will get cut off. Wardrobe area go here for space storage. That will go, so you don't have that feeling that you might hit your head when you go down the stairs. That will be blocked off. And this will be the ensuite for that room. Enter here. Now you've just been in here. We do need to make sure to look for the look at the floor, just in case. Oh, you mean so I don't fall through it? Yeah. No, no, I don't. I think it's all good. Apart from yeah. at some point. Apart from right, right, right where the yeah. uh, windows are, where the edges of the roof are the in. One day, Paul will just disappear, <laughs> and you'll hear his scream. And I'll either be laughing or trying to save him. One or the other depends what mood I'm in. Right. So, are you going in that one? So this is, now this you need to be careful with the floor in here. So we're in the eaves, but you've got an amazing height. So maybe if you look, you've got, that's the end of the turret. Yeah. In the corner there. Now there's been either been, we're basically treading on poo. Well, Paul is, because I'm not yeah. going in. I've no idea what the floor's like underneath you. Yeah, it feels solid. Yeah. I mean, if that's the one with the wasp nest in it, I've been over there. I don't think it is. I think you need to come back. Retrace your steps. So this window here is one of the only ones in the building that hasn't got an arch. Can, can, that, can yeah. you open that shutter? Probably. So it's the only square one, I think, except one downstairs, which is going to be removed from the wall it's in and put in a different one. Yeah, you can hear the pigeon. Is that a pigeon? Yeah. God, I can hear... I'm deaf and I can hear the pigeon, so that's actually quite exciting. And then your bathroom. This would be a massive... This would be the master of the top floor of the property, wouldn't it? Oh, definitely. I wanted you to get in the ceiling height. Yeah, we're going to You've do done that, that right now. No, I haven't done that. I'm not sure. Oh, no, there we go. Good. Because obviously it's quite a grand room. Oh, totally a grand room. So what you're creating is on the... Oh, this is square as well. I would be lying. As I go through, I'm just going to realise I'm talking rubbish some of the time. Um, the, the window opposite is also with the square top because it's right at the top of the building, isn't it? So up here, you've got three ensuite rooms... Downstairs, you've got their master ensuite, which with, a, with its own sort of snug 
area 